Welcome back to Tea and Rocket, and today we're going to jump right in and talk about Eric Gordon and how coach Steven Silas can get the most out of his game. It's long been thought by Houston officials that the team is at its best when Eric Gordon is at his best, and we need that six man of the year version of Eric Gordon to be true title contenders. Unfortunately, that production has dropped off significantly over the last two years, and this previous season especially was a disaster. He made the decision to opt for knee surgery after the season started, rather than during the off-season, and not only did his shot not fall down, sometimes to an alarming degree, he lacked any around the rim game, and only in flashes did we see him really put his head down and drive. Gordon will turn 32 at the start of the season, and while it may be the decline phase, Houston should still be expecting at least some late prime production. He's bounced back from injuries before, and there's no reason why he can't have a bounce back year now too. What we'll be looking at today is how to improve Gordon's shooting. A three-point bomber respected around the league, Gordon can still stand way out from deep and see the defense guard him. He's always taken tough shots in Houston, and despite what many may think, he actually converts more of his shots from further away than right at the line. He could probably be something like a 40% shooter in a different offense. But Gordon shot around 36 to 37% in his first three years for the Rockets before dropping to just 32% last year, improving out of the 20s only thanks to a late season burst. Coach Silas is coming from a Dallas team that had exceptional shooting. What took them from a very good offense to the NBA's most efficient offense in league history was their shooters around Luka Doncic. After Luka and Pozingis, their next three role players ordered by shot attempts hit 40%, 45%, and 43% from deep respectively. For Houston, Ben McLemore led the way, hitting 40% of his threes, but it was a big drop off after that, with Daniel House and PJ Tucker both shooting around 36%. Dallas was second in three point attempts last season and 10th in three point percentage, a deadly combination. For reference, Houston was first in attempts, but a miserable 24th in percentage. Now, Dallas does have a very well regarded shooting coach something Houston can't just replicate and bring over, but there are other reasons for their shooting performance, and that's what we will be exploring today to see if there's anything Houston can do to get Gordon going. The player I want to focus on from Dallas is Tim Hardaway Jr., a below average shooter all of his career who suddenly shot 40% on over 7 attempts per game last year. So how did he do it? Well, Hardaway Jr. took a surprisingly high 24% of his 3 pointers from the corner. Dallas placed him there purposely to get better looks. Hardaway never took this amount of shots from the corner before. His last season in New York, these only accounted for 7.7% of his three-point shots. And since Tim Hardaway Jr. hit a monster 44.7% of his corner threes, the way that Dallas was able to triple his volume there was a big reason for his overall bump. Now compare that to Eric Gordon, whose corner three-point attempts have lowered each year in Houston to just 7.9% last season. Dallas was able to put Hardaway Jr. in the corner because of their offensive alignment. They had two wings on either side of the court, Chris Taps Pozingis or Max Kleber running pick and roll with Doncic, who both can crucially either roll or pop for a three-point shot, and then they often had Hardaway alone in the strong side corner. Houston can replicate this alignment by having Christian Wood stretching the floor above the break. They will have PJ Tucker, of course, stationed in one corner, meaning the other wing, be it Daniel House, David Nwaba or Ben McLemore, will have to spend some time in the slot or above the break to free the other up for Gordon. This shouldn't be a huge problem for the Rockets, as both McLemore and House are actually their two best above the break shooters, hitting 38 and 37% of their shots there respectively. It already sounds like Houston will be using some of the alignments Dallas ran, and on media day last week, Coach Silas mentioned Christian Wood being used at the top of the perimeter specifically. To have John Wall pushing the ball up the floor and either passing ahead to a running wing or keeping it and getting the ball into the paint and making all the great passes that he's made over his career that is accentuated by playing the way that I want to play, five out with space and allowing guys to get into the paint and do their thing. To have Christian Wood trail the play and be able to roll and, and pop and play in a very similar way that I had uh, Perzingis playing when I was offensive coordinator in Dallas. Um, I, I see that as a, as a positive. Even when they have non-shooting centers on the court, Dallas still uses Chris Tapps gravity to stretch the floor for their shooters. They run double screens here with Dwight Powell and Pozingis, and the combination of a roller and a popper 
scrambles for defence to get Hardaway Jr. a great look in the corner. Even when they just have Boban Marjanovic there, a basic pick and roll surrounded by three shooters is the staple of almost all NBA offences. Next I want to look at some of the plays Houston ran in the 2016-17 season for Eric Gordon, when he shot his highest percentage from deep. This is a Spain pick and roll, and it was a very popular play in the NBA around this time in his first season as head coach. The centre sets a screen, and Gordon sets a second screen behind him at the free throw line, popping to the perimeter as the centre rolls. Between the threat of the centre and Harden going downhill, the third player is often left free as the defence scrambles. And the reason why I love this play is it gets Gordon a shot in the position he shoots best at, the top of the perimeter. Over four years in Houston, Eric Gordon has shot below league average from the wings or slot position. From the top of the perimeter, however, an area where most of the league sees a small dip in accuracy, he excels. He's hit 40% from this area in four years in Houston, and even in this past season where he shot a poor 32% overall, he was still at an above league average 36% from this area. Unfortunately though, Gordon is now taking more shots on the wing where he is just worse. In his first two years, these accounted for about two thirds of his three point shots, which is now over three quarters. And you can see in this shot chart from last season, the tiny frequency of shots he was getting in the corner and at the top of the perimeter, his favorite positions. And Gordon can also get into these positions by moving more off ball. Again, this is something he did more in Mike D'Antoni's first season in Houston, and they ran a common play here where Gordon enters the ball into the post, then feigns a cut but sneaks around the big man at the top of the key. Gordon shot a ridiculous 45.5% on all of these shots coming off either a Spain pick and roll we saw earlier or this flare screen where he pops to the top of the perimeter. Again, how Coach Silas generates these looks, there's just so many different ways to choose from, but just get Gordon moving off ball and getting these types of shots will bring a huge increase in his conversion rate. Gordon also shot 40% on this play, mostly used out of a 2-1 series with Gordon curling around two screeners. He takes a dribble and turns to the basket from the top of the perimeter and lets it fly, and this is just something I want to see the Houston Rockets bring back. We just didn't see Gordon doing this last year relegate instead to being a spot-up shooter, simply playing off of Harden or Russ on the opposite side of a backcourt. And while there is value in that, in 2016-17, Houston ran a combination of these plays, the Spain pick and roll, the flare screen pop to the top, or this curling 2-1 action, a total of 70 times. That number was less than 20 last season, and we didn't substitute them with anything else. Other than a few PJ Tucker simple off-ball screens, it was almost all spot-up shots. So that about sums it up for this video on Eric Gordon and his shooting specifically. We hear over and over again how shooters just want to get to their spots, and over the last couple of seasons under Mike D'Antoni's offense, Gordon has been moving further and further away from his. Whether it's more variations out of the 2-1 series, or bringing back the Spain pick and rolls, getting Gordon moving more with the ball and off ball, and then ending up at the top of the perimeter, is what has brought him the most success. And with Steven Silas's offensive alignments, you can probably get him more corner threes. Not a lot or even half of his shots will come from there because you're still going to have PJ Tucker and probably David Nwaba in the corners most of the time. But just more than the 7.9% frequency he had last year. I'm confident that in Steven Silas's tweaked offensive system, Gordon will see his numbers rise to around the 37% average we were more used to seeing before this season. Now please make sure to subscribe and keep checking out the channel and my blog tandrockets.com for more breakdowns. And you can always follow me on Twitter at NathanFogg1 and that's Fogg with two Gs. Thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day.